Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with UI6 Vids, and in today's episode, we have a double barrel AR. Yeah, two mags and everything. This should be fun. That is satisfying. It's cold right now with the wind chill, it's about 17, 16 degrees. Oh, yeah, it's a little cold. So jumping right into it, this is a double barrel AR rifle. Yeah, it is what it sounds like. It's two ARs that is built into one platform with two triggers. So this is the Gilboa snake rifle developed by Silver Shadow, obviously chambered in 5.56. I love the fact that this gun uses standard AR-15 magazines. You don't have to have some proprietary mag that only works with this gun. You can stick one AR mag in one side and another different color mag on the other side. You can have a 40 rounder or a 20 rounder or a 10 rounder. It takes AR style magazines across the board. They have their proprietary uh, dual coupler that holds two mags together and they sell those and you can buy a lot of them. I have about five or six of them that way I uh, don't have to keep reloading for the shooting portion of this video because it takes forever. You're ripping out 300 rounds back to back to back to see how this performs, if there's any malfunctions, any issues with the dual system feeding the rounds, if there's any problems with the gas. Uh, we will see when we start shooting it at a steel target and some paper, along with some more fun volatile targets as we get along in the video. But to talk about the specs, uh, you have your mag well like you would on a normal AR-15, but you have left and right hand side. The nice thing is this is an independent system from left and right hand side. It's not just one trigger pull, two rounds down range. Now you can stick your whole finger across both triggers, rip off two rounds in one pull technically, but it is two independent firing systems. And you have a right handed barrel, a left handed barrel. Now to sight this in, it's kind of tricky if you don't know what you're looking for, but the best way to explain it is the right barrel, when you adjust it, it adjusts for elevation. When you adjust the left barrel, it adjusts for windage. So in order to make it dialed, you unlock the side lock and you adjust up and down to make sure you're somewhat point of aim on the right barrel. On the left side, you unlock and then you adjust for windage. And your goal is to get the bullets to be apart from themselves at about 20 to 25 yards downrange you know you're dialed. Because you can independently move both barrels and align them in different ways, you theoretically can align these to where point of impact will be dead on top of each other at a certain distance down range to be able to have a follow-up impact on say body armor or other hard targets to maybe allow for more penetration. And that's up to the shooter to decide if they actually want to do that, but it's something that theoretically could work. There is an instructional video online that shows how to do it. I think it's kind of a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. I think the best thing to do is to get real close to a target, about 10 to 15 yards, paper target, decent size, get a nice bench rest in position and just pull off both triggers, boom, and see where the bullets impact. Now, granted, if your fingers aren't long enough, you could be pulling one trigger faster than the other trigger and it can pull your second shot. And so you think you're off target when you're really not. So it does get a little complicated if you want to do it the standard way of sighting in. It's best to have an optic you put onto this firearm that's already dialed for another AR, that way you know it's sighted in. Look down the sight, pull the right trigger, and see where the impact impacts on the paper target. Then pull the left trigger and see where that impacts. You will see a shift high on one or left and right on the other, and you adjust the barrels accordingly to dial them in. You can dial this in to be dead on balls accurate for where you want to shoot, but for the most part, this gun, in my opinion, is never gonna be designed for being a long range precision rifle. It's not. It's meant for CQB, close quarters, and you're able to dump a lot of ammunition on your target without a lot of reloading in between. 60 rounds of 5.56 or 223 is gonna get the job done very quickly. I would love to drop in some binary echo triggers into the system and be able to rip off rounds even faster, but because it's a unique design with two different trigger systems inside the rifle, I'm not sure how well that would work or if they would even fit. So long range capability, yes, you can shoot out the long range, but if you think about two barrels, you're gonna be thinking about deviation of bullet spread down range, especially if you try to rip off two rounds at once because of that slight change of maybe pulling the right trigger sooner than the left trigger, your shots are gonna be pulling left or right or high or low and downrange those shots can impact dramatically different from each other especially out three four five hundred plus yards so it's best to keep this thing as a cqb rifle nothing more nothing less in my opinion if you want to go further out you can but you're going to run into issues down the line this thing i think the right barrel is hitting a little high like maybe one or two centimeters higher than the left but it's good enough for what we're going to be using it for today the biggest thing is to see if this will jam 
and have any issues with feeding rounds in with the independent feeding systems. So now for reliability on this rifle, the cool thing is because they're independent, if one side were to jam, you can still fire the other side. So say for instance, it stove pipes or doesn't eject around, you won't be dead in the water. You just won't be able to fire that left hand or right hand side of the gun. You can fire the other one. Now you do have to keep in mind though, you're working with two independent systems. So you gotta keep an eye on multiple parts because there's two of everything. Two triggers, two BCGs, two barrels, two gas systems, all feeding back into one upper receiver and back into one stock. You have a stock that is fixed. You can't adjust this, you can't pull it out or in. It stays right where it's at because of the BCGs coming back and the buffer tubes that are back there as well. But you have only one charging handle. Okay, so if you have a failure to feed on one side and you go to clear it, you're going to be losing the good round as well. That's one of my biggest caveats out of the box when I look at this and think about the design of it. You are losing your ability to clear just one side if you have one malfunction. Yes, the other side still functions, but if you want to clear that by pulling back on the charging handle, you're tossing good ammunition out of the other action. So. Uh, it's a pro and a con. You got to keep in mind what you're getting and losing with this setup. Is it designed for everyone? Absolutely not. Most people may not even want this. Is it designed for those that are looking outside the box and want something unique? That's for sure. Uh, this is definitely something unique and hasn't been done before. The badass factor of this rifle definitely is achieved. Silver Shadow knocked it out of the park with that. It looks cool. It saves on weight because of the reinforced polymer aspects of it, not just being all aluminum and it's just so much fun to shoot. But on the practicality side of things, if you're looking for a practical rifle, this ain't it. Uh, I'm just gonna be straightforward and honest with you, in my opinion. If you think you can find a practical use for this, then awesome, it's gonna be unique. But we'll see how the reliability is when we start shooting at the targets with back-to-back -back shots and see if there's any malfunctions and how we're able to clear those without losing a ton of ammunition on the opposing side as we shoot. Hopefully there's no malfunctions, that'd be ideal. But if there is, you will see. The upper and the handguard are aluminum, so you're getting a good, nice, sturdy feel in this gun, but you're not too heavy because you do have that polymer lower and the stock. It's not all aluminum, so you're saving weight there. And of course, you have your chrome lined barrels, standard you'd find on an AR, and you have your standard gas operated gas systems going back into two BCGs, blowing those BCGs back into a buffer tube with the springs and buffers themselves. So just think two times of an AR. <laughs> smash together and put into a lower receiver that's one with two triggers next to it and you're getting the general idea now the safety is only on the left hand side it's kind of cumbersome though because of how thick and wide this system is unless you have bigger hands being able to manipulate the safety is a little bit different you got to reach around a thick upper and lower even though the grip's the same width the lower and the upper are quite a bit different in width and i'll show you that on the screen so you got to get used to it. It does have some weight. I mean, you're looking at that 12 pound range for this rifle compared to half of that, if not way less, with lightweight AR rigs. So it is something to get used to. But for the most part, it's definitely, like I said, the badass factor. But the practicality factor, I leave up to you guys. I'm not going to say yay or nay on this rifle. I'm just going to show you what it does. Let's shoot at some targets, have some fun. I have shot this quite a bit. I did a video in the past with a second one. I did a dual wielding double barrel AR-15 video. You can click right here if you want to see that or the link will be in the description. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I'll be cutting away to some B-roll I took in that video in this video for you guys to enjoy. Uh, just a whole lot of fun seeing technically four AR barrels going off at once it's it's interesting i would love to have this in a full auto version i think that would be incredible plus you would be able to have a single trigger and not just two but then you lose the ability of firing just one barrel and not the other barrel you would have to fire both always but yes there is the factor because the two triggers you can put different types of ammunition in one mag compared to the other mag so if you wanted hollow points in one or ball ammunition in another or you know 70 plus grain ammunition in one mag or 55 grain in another it's entirely up to you have fun but in my opinion i just like loading up the exact same ammunition so i know what i'm getting and uh, you can be more reliable that way up top we do have a nice nikon optic this is a one to four optic it's nothing for long range uh, it is an illuminated reticle this thing is probably one of my favorite one to four optics for the price range it's in the eye relief on it's incredible and the price range is just right if you're looking for a good one to four optic for close to medium range to put on your ar go check it out i'll leave the link in the description all right enough talking you guys get it. Let's go uh, shoot this thing and see what type of 
things we find out as we're pulling the triggers. Hopefully, it'll all be good because this is definitely unique. All right, let's jump into it. Fire in the hole. <laughs> that is an incredible amount of firepower. <laughs> That is almost too much fun. All right, catch up in high speed. Why not? Doesn't get old. Let's see if we can do both trigger pulls on each one. Oh, <laughs> got catch up in my hair. That shot catch up up and somehow landed straight down on me. So that was all well and good, but the issue I had was I loaded the mag up with regular ball ammunition and not hollow points. So let's see how well hollow points do against catch up. This should be much better. <laughs> I'm safe. Yeah, just a smidge difference. All right, moving on. Time to add that barbecue smell to the uh, aroma of ketchup. All we need now is hot dogs. But propane container hanging right here. I'm gonna hang a road flare from the top. This should be a nice little woo. <laughs> Please be smart. Do not recreate these things. Don't do it yourself. Be smart. Um, been doing this for a lot of years. I know the proper distance for certain things and these propane containers can spin wildly. So you gotta be very careful. Never reenact anything you see on my channel. Just watch and enjoy. All right, always pick up your trash. All the stuff that gets blown up, I pick up later, put it in trash bags and carry it out. Don't dirty up your gun range. It sucks. Right. <laughs> ah, gotta love it. That is exactly why <laughs> don't recreate what you see here on my channel. I have a flaming propane container behind my camera. It goes to show you be very, very careful. Don't reenact this stuff. Let me go put out those fires. Ah, the smell of roasted ketchup. Well, the flare is still going and uh, put that out in a second. And the fires put themselves out because it's really wet. It's been snowing and raining a lot. I wouldn't do this if there was any chance of spreading a wildfire. Always check to make sure though. Super wet right now, so we're good. Moving on. So 
we have one, two, three, four, and then five, including the one that's in the rifle, fully loaded dual magazines with 60 rounds in each dual system. So we have 300 5.56 rounds going down range. <laughs> we'll see what happens, but at least this gives you a general idea if this gun has any problems with failures to feed, failures to extract, uh, any jamming malfunctions, any jamming malfunctions whatsoever. Wow, my, ah, my face is frozen. I don't know if you've ever been so cold where your cheeks don't let you articulate your mouth. So you gotta, <laughs> hopefully, uh, warm up those cheeks. Woo! Okay, let's start shooting. First two mags are up, standard 5.56, 55 grain ammunition. Nothing special, nothing crazy. I have noticed though that this gun requires a little bit more of a slap to seat those two mags into the mag well or else they'll fall out the bottom quite easily. So give it a good gingerly tap to get them going. And then standard one charging handle in the back, pull it back, let it go. You do have two springs back here. So you are dealing with more pressure when you have to pull back on that charging handle. You gotta get used to that. I wish this was a dual pull. You had a, another release on this side so you can grab from this side or that side. Good to go. Oh shit. Woo! <laughs> Almost forgot my hearing protection. All right, get this set down to one power. The field of view on this, the eye relief on this one to four optic is fantastic. Uh, if you go check it out, you'll see what I mean, but got good draw points too. We'll put it on a illumination of, let's say seven. Yeah, looks good. I am having a really hard time talking. <laughs> my cheeks are freezing. All right, let's go. Let's do, uh, let's just do two trigger pulls at once to see what it looks like on that silhouette. Yeah, so you can see how one's a little bit lower than the right. I pulled that trigger and if, I don't know if you could hear it audibly, but it was a blah, like just, just slightly off from the other trigger pull, which allows you to dip your shot. And just by not having a identical trigger pull, that slight difference, me dipping forward on that second shot because I'm leaning into the first shot caused that impact to be much lower than the first shot was. So it's something to keep in mind with this, especially if you think you're gonna use this for longer range. Not smart in my opinion if you're gonna rip off two trigger pulls at once. One trigger at a time, that could be viable, but you are having a left and right hand impact from left or right hand barrel. So keep it in mind, let's do another double trigger pull on that target. Two, five, five, six rounds coming out at once. Shoot at that steel target down there. That is satisfying. You can hear the impacts hitting slightly different from themselves. So it's like a ba 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 ba. I want to see what the steel looks like real quick after I'm done with these first two mags. Let's unload on the uh, favorite target. <laughs> it's so difficult, especially with gloves uh, and cold fingers, to pull both triggers at the exact same time. It just ends up being kind of a type feel. But holy crap, you tear up your target and you dump a lot of money and ammo really fast shooting that way. But on that note, once again, I want to say thank you to my ammunition sponsor. And that's right, it's you guys. GY6 Vids is mainly fan supported and I can't say thank you enough. If you like the content you're seeing on my channel, please head over to our fan support page. Fan support page. <laughs> That's a little hard to say. Link is in the description. It's over on Patreon right now. Patreon.com forward slash GY6. Go check it out. Dollar a month, 12 bucks a year. It helps a ton with enough hands on board and makes for easier work. Allows me to buy more ammunition, more gear, more guns, more optics and uh, be able to bring them to you in a good way. High speed footage isn't cheap. High speed camera definitely isn't cheap. And the cinema rigs reason right now aren't cheap. A lot of work goes into post-production. And all that happens because we have good fan support, not only with liking and subscribing and sharing the content and commenting, but also because of fan support financially. So I want to say thank you guys so much. You're my ammunition sponsor for today's video. That's 60 rounds down. Let me look at the steel target to see what it looks like and what the impacts have done hitting side by side. <laughs> That's cool. So looking down at the steel target, just from being you know, 10 yards away to being 45 yards away, the impact shift, rather than being here, 
is like here. So there's a tremendous difference only at 45 yards. Once again, backing my statement of saying long range is not practical, especially if you wanna pull both triggers. I'd stay away from that. What I will say though, is this vertical grip helps a ton to control and mitigate that recoil. Uh, it's not as bad as you would think because there's a lot of weight behind the gun and it kind of levels itself out, but it's something to get used to. I like it. So that was the first 60 rounds. Let's do another 60, rip them off real fast and see how it performs. So far, so good, no jams, no fillers to feed. And I have shot about 300 rounds plus out of this system already, uh, just in B-roll and stuff like that and haven't had any issues. Haven't cleaned it, haven't taken it apart. It's just how it has been from the factory. Also, you have a bolt release on this side and a bolt release on this side. And you're good to go. <laughs> Let's do a steel. That's a lot of fun, and that's both barrels at the same time. Let's dump just one at a time. One, let's do the right trigger first, then I'll do left trigger, and see if there's any issues with the BCG cycling. Even though they're independent, it's worth checking it out. Right side first. So you can see my trigger finger is a lot more used to doing one trigger. Now let's do the uh, left side. Cycling fine, no issues there. You can tell that pace is a little bit slower on the left side because I gotta reach my finger all the way across both triggers to get to that second trigger. It's not like a long way, but it's just a different mechanical feel. So that's another 60 rounds down. So that's 120 just in this section of the video. I don't wanna, I don't wanna make it long-winded and discuss point of impact shifting between trigger pulls and I don't know, just, I'm showing you the specs, you know what it is, you see the gun. If it fails, you'll see it. If it doesn't, you'll see it, and you can make your own opinion up on if you wanna buy it or not. It's up to you, but at least you get to see it firsthand. All right, so BCG dropped, BCG dropped. Let's do both barrels again and unload on that paper. I'm gonna start chopping this thing down. <laughs> oh my god honestly that gets your blood going in a different way you just keep pulling those triggers and you're like good lord <laughs> that target is jacked up already there's another 60 rounds both sides are locked back no fillers to feed no cycling issues good lord so we have 180 rounds of 556 once again Thank you guys for being ammo sponsors. Not cheap. Okay, another 60 rounds. See if we have any issues. Let's go independently this time. Actually, know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna leave this BCG back and just drop this side and see if there's any issues with that BCG being back. I'm not sure how that'll function. Let's see. Ah, okay. So it's either the system cycling back and then letting that bolt carrier come forward again on that next round or it's the vibration either way having one lock back doesn't stay there after you pull the first trigger but you can still independently work the triggers as i've said plenty of times let's do down range on the steel it's got some weight to it you gotta have to settle into your shoulder a little bit and get used to that because the stock is also super wide so your cheek kind of like fits on it <laughs> like this rather than side by side it's a different mechanical feel to this gun you got to practice with it if you want to use it very often uh, so that's the right trigger let's go left trigger down range yeah it's different yeah reaching across that trigger is still very unique and weird I gotta get used to that uh, and let's dump the rest of them right here <laughs> that doesn't get old at all well, there's another 60 rounds whoo blow through boxes of ammo quite quickly 
Uh, yeah, so this will be mag number five at 60 a piece. This is gonna be 300, 300 five, five, six rounds in a very quick period of time to see how reliable this is. So far, no problems. And like I've stated in past videos, this is just one gun out of many that this company is making. Just because this gun is performing well right now doesn't mean one that you get will. So if you do see issues with guns, please leave me comments in the videos, give me direct messages. It's always good to break down things that are happening with pros and cons of a firearm and also to let the company know as well. Don't be the negative Nancy going, oh, this gun had one failure to feed, so ah, throw it away, I don't want it, not worth it. No, it's not how it should go. Understand that some things go wrong. So far, it's working flawlessly, and so far, in my opinion, it is running very well, but this is one gun out of many, so I don't wanna be like, this is the end all be all test. No, it's never like that. We need the gun community as a whole, you guys included watching, your, this is a gun community, not just YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. It's not just those people that post things about guns, it's everyone that uses firearms. We wanna report back about what's happening and be positive about it. Even though you may not like the issue, that's how you find out how to make a gun better or more reliable is, first off, not having a frozen face so you can talk. <laughs> but it's a community effort. And it doesn't mean we have to be negative towards companies and bash them. And it doesn't mean those companies can cut costs and screw us over on the product themselves. That's why reviews are so important and honesty is so important. I'm always gonna give it to you straight. I always have, and I hope you guys appreciate that. This is a very cool gun. So this is the last mag. I don't wanna draw it out. You guys have seen it shooting, you've seen it working. Um, you know, I can rip off more and more mags and maybe you know, it's 18 mags in, it might have a problem, but so far it's working well. 60 more rounds. Dual trigger pull down range. <laughs> Hitting that steel, you can hear ba ba ba. That's very unique. Unloading here. <laughs> left side's already clear. I think we have one or two left in the barrel. Easy to shoot, accurate, consistent, no failures to feed whatsoever. Clearly my fingers are getting numb because I thought I was pulling both barrels and I guess a lot of those I didn't on that target. <laughs> Something to get used to. Ugh, safety is on. Guys, this is Andrew Bocher with GY6Viz. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Gilboa Snake Double Barrel AR. Too much fun, a whole lot of fun. Practicality, eh, I'll leave it up to you guys. You tell me what you think but definitely performs and functions the way it's supposed to and definitely brings the badass factor. Whew. Leave me some comments, let me know what you think. Let me know different ideas for future videos. Thank you for all the likes, all the subscriptions, all the sharing, all the fan support. It means, it means a ton. I, my face is numb. I don't have any other words I can say physically or mentally. Ah, I'm gonna go get warm. <laughs> See you guys next time. Later.